Cam Badley, we all know him from Aurora, a big, big man in the industry. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. Uh, I want to talk about how you got involved in the industry. We know some of the background, but two years ago, lay it down for me. I, I, I was actually working in the global biotech industry, uh, biotech and pharmaceuticals, and I was approached by a former colleague of mine in 2014 right. uh, who said, you got to get into this business. And I said, uh, come on, I do serious things. I work for the CEO of Bayer in Berlin and Pfizer in New York and uh, uh, Amgen in Thousand Oaks, California. What's this, right? Yeah, and he said, you know what, uh, this is serious. It's real medicine. I want you to look into it. I want you to read the uh, clinical data that are available from investigator-sponsored trials and come back and tell me what you think. And the light bulb went on for me immediately right. because having worked in every therapeutic category in, in healthcare, uh, I was well aware that there's a vast unmet medical need with respect to symptom management Absolutely. across a wide range of health conditions. And that's where cannabis comes in. Uh, it's not a disease modifying yeah. therapy, but it is helpful in managing the symptoms. So I ended up getting into this business. Uh, at the time, I worked for Canopy, which yeah. is uh, the only company that currently is larger than Aurora, right. um, and, uh, and got a really good training in this business and learned to love it, and then moved over in uh, the spring of 2016 okay. to Aurora, and it's been a hell of a ride since then. No kidding, huh? Yeah. And how the company's adapted. We were talking before about the advocacy space and people actually engaging with those advocates out there, You know, the people that are passionate about the industry, and they want to learn more about what cannabis can actually do for for them. How do you engage those folks? So let me emphasize just how much I've learned from the activists and the advocates in this business. Because I came in, I'm a suit, right? right. I'm a business right. guy. Right. And one of the things that makes Aurora special is that um, more so than any other cannabis company, we've created this unique hybrid culture that brings together suits like me uh, with people who come from the cannabis community, who come from the dispensaries here uh, in Vancouver, right. who've been involved in the cannabis business for a long time, in some cases a suspiciously long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's where the expertise comes from and that's where the passion comes from. Right. And that has informed everything that we do at Aurora. And I have personally learned from them. So uh, that's been one of the most gratifying elements uh, of, of the work that I do and of the role that I play with Aurora. I've really, really enjoyed that. So we see quality assurance as, as being something that's crucial and very important in the industry, very important in the community. How do you talk or, or teach, rather, uh, a corporate culture within your community at Aurora, talking to everybody so that they want it just as much as you and they're just as passionate? So um, uh, quality control is, um, is par for the course in the business that I come from, yeah. biotech and pharma. Um, it wouldn't necessarily be the case in a brand new industry that you're inventing called the cannabis uh, right. industry, the legal cannabis industry. Right. Um, at, at Aurora, it's job one. Um, just like Ford used to say, quality's job one. But our QA rules the roost. Uh, so she sets the rules and uh, we all obey uh, this incredibly strict culture of regulatory compliance. Uh, and you have to do that because if you don't, you end up with the kinds of problems that we saw not yeah. long ago in this sector right. with people using nasty things that are not allowed yeah. uh, as, uh, well, on the plants. Right. And, and that puts people at risk and we cannot be having that in, in this business. Right. So we've established a, a corporate culture um, that, um, that, first of all, ensures that um, hierarchy doesn't matter when it comes to uh, the most important things like quality control. The QA rules the roost and nobody is going to tell her. Uh, if anybody tried to tell our penny uh, what to do, uh, you would be learning something That's new it. very, very soon. That's and that it. doesn't matter what level of the company that you're at. So function is more important than hierarchy. Uh, and, and establishing that, that culture of strict regulatory compliance uh, as, as something that's assumed from the very beginning is critical. So we've seen stigma dramatically increase in not only the last couple of years, but in the last few months substantially. How important is it to work with public awareness campaigns and with the government to educate? Okay, so education ahead of consumer legalization right. is critically important and we saw that uh, based on the Colorado and Washington mm -hmm. experience and we're starting to do that right now. We're starting to do public education on things such as keeping cannabis away from kids. Um, you know, I'm a, uh, they call me the squarest guy in the cannabis business. Yeah. I'm a scout leader for 10 years and a soccer coach for 10 years and I don't want underage youth using cannabis any more than I want them using alcohol right. or psychoactive prescription drugs. So we're doing a good thing uh, educating the public about that and also about the dangers of impaired driving. Right no matter what the substance. Um, that said, the stigma has changed in Canada very, very distinctly just since I got into this business. When I came into the medical cannabis industry in 2014, 
I tended not to want to talk publicly about right. what I did because right. there was still quite a bit of stigma attached to it. These days, it's that the parents of, of my scouts and of my soccer players right. who sometimes say, hey, I saw you on TV, what's the latest? And they're, they're quite curious. And I think the reason why attitudes have changed so much is because we've had three and a half years of experience yeah. with the medical system. And so we've got 300,000 yeah, 300, Canadians have a prescription. Totally. And if grandma yeah. is using it, if my uncle Ted is using it, right. um, then probably it's not so dangerous. Dangerous. So we've seen rapid social change around that and it's very gratifying. So let's talk about and jump forward to, I'd like to jump forward if we can, July. Yeah. What can we expect? Where are we at? I mean, you guys are working with the government daily, I'm sure. Um, let's talk about how we're going to wind this thing open and are we going to make the deadline? Ah, uh, deadline. I know. You know, uh, who knows? The Senate might delay it a little bit, whether it's July, whether it's August. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. We're, we're doing it. Yeah. Um, so I don't think anybody should, you know, uh, uh, panic if it's not July 1st. It yeah, doesn't really matter. And, and for some companies more than others, it doesn't really matter. Because for us, we also have different distribution channels right. internationally. We're yeah. already selling our product in Europe. Yeah, of course. So it, um, in big picture, should we worry about a deadline? No. Uh, at Aurora, are we worried about a deadline? No. How is Germany these days? A fantastic market, yeah. just just growing so fast. Uh, we own the largest medical cannabis distributor in the European Union. Right. Uh, it's called Padanios. We acquired them in the spring of 2017 uh, for about 23 million dollars, and it's turned out to be a transformative, wow. incredibly valuable acquisition for us because it's opening up the entire EU. And uh, and in Europe, there's tremendous demand, and the, the excess of demand over supply right. for legal regulated cannabis is the story uh, globally of 2018. Right. And, and, uh, and a part of that story is that companies like Aurora and, and Canopy, leading Canadian companies that are extremely well capitalized uh, and, and have made it their business to expand internationally, we're going to be putting our stamp on the world this year. It's really exciting. We're right at the forefront of it. Right at it. Thank yeah. you, my friend. Thanks for coming on today. I appreciate it. And best of luck. It's going to be an exciting year. Thank you very much.